Welcome to Transfer Deadline Day, 31st of August. Here I am with Tony Cotty. Good morning, oh, Steve. Good morning, TC. How are you? Oh, very good, thank you. And um, we're going to try and unravel what may or may not happen today. We don't know, but there'll be no trade secrets, I promise. Is that correct? <laughs> correct. Correct. Right. But let's start with the two big transfers so far, uh, Ronaldo and Messi. Did you see those happening? I don't think anyone saw, certainly, well, probably both of them, really, mm. because I mean, if you look at Messi, I think you know he was linked heavily linked with Man City, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah. this time last year, and you're thinking if, you, if everyone was going to go, it was last year. Obviously, stayed another season yeah. at Barcelona, and then all of a sudden, it, it, it was done, wasn't it? Within two days, which you know, transfers are weird on tra on transfer day. You know, they can they can happen very very quickly, mm. Steve, or sometimes mm. they're protracted and they go on and on and on. You've got for God's sake, just get it done, get it done, done yeah, you know? sign it, sign But it. the Messi one was over and done within two days, mm. and then of course you then. The other guy you mentioned, Ronaldo, yeah, right. and, uh, you know, I thought with going to Juventus, he probably would stay there maybe for the rest of his career. Yeah. Or I thought yeah. maybe a little dabble in America yeah. towards the end yeah. of his career. I think he's got a place out yeah. there, and yeah. you think, you know, a little swan song out in America. But it sort of, the rumours came out he was going to leave, and then all of a sudden he's, he's going to Man City, and you think, wow. Now, if you're Sir Alex Ferguson, major, yeah, 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 major or Oliver the or, yeah. or any of the old players that he played with, they must have gone. We got cat skates yeah, on you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, you know I think in a way it's probably nice that he's gone back to Man United. I think there's quite um, there's something romantic about it because you know he was such a great player for Manchester United. You know he learned a lot of his skills that he took to Real Madrid and you know throughout his career at Manchester United. Um, if he'd have got to City, then there's all the aggro and oh, what's he doing playing there? I know it's happened before. Dennis Law, of course, yeah, yeah. many many years yeah, ago, yeah, famously yeah. Man, Man United, Man City. Um, Michael Love did Michael Love play Man City? I think. He uh, he did, yeah. He was, yeah. Dorsey, yeah. obviously, Liverpool, Newcastle, and Yeah, I'm just trying yeah. to think who's crossing the line. Man United, Man United. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, well, Man United, yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you, when you know, with those great clubs up there, there's so many great clubs in the North. If you cross the divide with it, 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 it does cause problems. So I'm pleased he's gone back. I think it's a great addition to the Premier League. Um, most people would say, why on earth would you pay that sort of money for a 36 year old? This is Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got probably the fittest body you've ever seen. Um, I think I think they've done the test. They said his his body fat was seven or something. Most footballers are eleven. And you know, I, I think if he wants to, I, I think they're talking about a two year deal with a one year option. Yeah, so yeah. that takes him to thirty nine. Ryan Giggs, of course, played into his forties. So Teddy Sheridan, yeah. someone who was going to be coming to Steve very, very true, soon, very true, very played true. into his forties, didn't they? And so, how how much impact do you think that will have them or have United in winning the Premier this year? I think it gives them a great chance. Um, do you know what I'd like, Steve? At the end of the season, I'd love it to be the last week, going into the last week of yeah, the season, yeah. and you've genuinely got three or four clubs that yeah. have got a good chance, chance of winning. Yeah. I think in the you know, previous season, Man City rocked away with last year, Liverpool the year before, Man City the year before that, and it's not been very competitive in the last month of the season. And I think we're long overdue a title battle where it's two, two in and throw in. Um, It'll be nice for, for the hunter as well, because rather than it's a nice team winning 10 games out, you've got people still you know, interested in what's going to happen. Yeah. Twists and turns like relegation, you've got twists and turns in the Premiership title as well. Yeah, and even the relegation battles have been sort of a bit sewn up, you know, two or three weeks before the end of the season. I always think it's nice when you get. You know the last day dramas. There's been many, many. Yeah. You know, obviously the Aguero one was the, the, the sort of yeah, the one that yeah, most yeah. people would look back on over the last ten years. But there's been some great finishes at the top and the bottom of the Premier League. But you know, I genuinely believe this year. I think with the signing of Ronaldo, I think you've got to say Man United yeah. can title contenders. Jaden Sancho as well, yeah. good player. You know, other good players to come back into the team. Uh, Liverpool got Van Dijk, they've got Gomez due back as well. Liverpool are going to play a big part in this. Are you surprised they've not? Replace Wijnaldum yet, or even the front three of Firmino, Salah, and Mane. Now, I know they're an incredible strike force, but people know them, they know to defend against them. Are you not so, I don't know if is there, but do you see anybody else joining them possibly? I think that'd be something that Klopp will be looking at. Um, mm. I mean, what staggers me now. Is the teams don't play the centre forward. No. I mean, you, you mentioned the front three at Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Not one of them's a, a, an out and out centre like forward. Like, like yourself. Like myself or Very many true. others at yeah, yeah. Man City. They won the league yeah, at the Cantor yeah. with no centre forward last year, really, because yeah, yeah. Aguero never played, Jesus never really played. No, no, no. So, is that the way forward? Are, are, are managers looking to sign footballers as opposed to, to forward or goal scorers? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Harry Kane would have been a great addition to Man City. That's not going to happen now. No, You've got someone like Mbappe who's uh, going to be leaving PSG. Looks like he might be going to Real Madrid, yep. albeit maybe now in the January, yeah, might not yeah. go through in this window. Yeah, yeah. But, the, the, you know, you've got Haaland. You know, where's Haaland going to go in a Do year's you think time? Do you come to the Premiership? Because I know this oh, I know all this day long. 
all day you, long. Absolutely. Yeah. And you got, you've got to remember his dad played yeah. as well in the Premier yeah, League. Correct. He would have grown up, I think he grew up a Men's City fan. Yeah. His dad played yeah. the Men's City. So he probably is the one. And I think if, if you're Men's City, you're thinking, maybe we can't get Harry Kane this year. You might be able to get Haaland as a get out clause this time next year. Me and you will be talking. Yeah. And Haaland <laughs> yeah. at Men's City. And you you know, think he's, he's 20, got, 21 years of age. He has got he's the world. That good, is he? he's, he's that good, is he? He, he is your complete all round centre forward. Yeah. Like Harry Kane is. Yeah. And yeah. if you can buy someone that guarantees the goals and the, the all round centre forward play, then you're yeah. going to be paying big money. But I think Haaland's got a 70 million release clause. And it's you not, know, into the, these days, well, compared the, to Mbappe, yeah, they're talking 150 mil for Mbappe, 150 mil for Kane. Yeah. You get Haaland for 70 mil, you put you know, 50% yeah, yeah. discount. So, happy days. And, and obviously, you should mention it, Chelsea it, as well, Steve. Go, I didn't, yeah, should. didn't mention Chelsea. Yeah. You know, Chelsea signed Lukaku. They Lukaku. Big time, yeah. So that's, a, that's a big. Again, they've got the out and out striker. Though. They've got the out and out striker. So, you've got to fancy Chelsea, Champions League winners as well. Mm. They'll be in with a shout. So, I've already mentioned Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, and Man City as well. You can't discount Man City. So, there's a four-way fight, I think, yeah, going to battle, yeah. uh, going to develop, not just for the Champions League places, but to actually win the Premier League. And we might get our dream of that last couple of weeks where they, who's, who's going to win the Premier League yeah, yeah. because that's what makes it exciting. And outside that obvious kind of top four, you know, who else do you see? And obviously, Arsenal had a great start. Spurs <laughs> as well. That's the biggest understatement of it. I'll be nice there. <laughs> great start. Uh, West Ham again, great start again. Leicester, great start again. You know, is it the same kind of three or four teams after the top four? Well, I mean, obviously we had all the uh, palaver with the, um, the so-called Super League and it was a lot of mention about the top six. You know, yeah. I've mentioned the four that I believe will compete for the Premier League title. The other two members of that, you've got Tottenham, currently top of the league, as we talk yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and they've kept Harry Kane. So yeah. you know, there's no reason why they can't expect a good season Spurs. Yeah. Will they get in the top four? I don't think so, but I think they'll certainly push you for Europa League spot, you know, trying to get in that top six. Arsenal have just had the most dreadful starts and it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Arteta. They've got some tough when, games coming up. When, does, when do you see pressure happening maybe on Arteta if the, the run of games isn't that good in their bottom four or five after maybe nine or ten games? Will the pressure the increase? The pressure's there now, Steve. Yeah. It's there. You know, the pressure's there. The fans, I've got a lot of friends of mine are Gunas. They're not happy. No. Um, um, the him you know, or the club? I think it's both. I think right. they're, I think they're, they're, there's certainly been question marks about the manager. Yeah. They've got to be. If, you're, yeah. if you've spent a hundred, they've they spent more money in this window than mm. any other club mm. last mm. And they're bottom of the league. They haven't scored a goal. Mm. So you've got to ask questions about the management. You've got to certainly ask questions about the players because they're the ones out on the field to play. And then you've then got the issue with Stan Kroenke and you know the ownership. And there was, I think there was a there was a guy that was sort of talking about you know putting the money up yeah, and yeah. bringing in all the legendary players and everything. That's all gone quiet. So you know Arsenal are a club in turmoil. And you know the, I've been in that position, Steve. If you make a bad start to the season, mm -hmm. it is so hard, hard to get the wheels. Yeah, you know, like even this early, even in this life, early in, <coughs> this already not panic setting in, but even this early in three games into the Premiership, there's worry. There's concern. There was a very interesting stat the other day, and they said that um, any team that's lost its first three games, the highest they finished is seventh. That was Aston Villa a long, long time ago, in the 90s or something, when they yeah. lost the first three yeah. games, finished seventh in the Premier League. So yeah. Any club that's lost their first three games, it's so hard to then get into the top six. Yeah. Because yeah. if you look at it, I mean, you know, Spurs have got nine points at the moment as we stand. Arsenal have got zero. That's nine points. That's three wins. Three games, yeah. On the basis, yeah. Spurs lose three games. Yeah. So <laughs> it's very, very difficult to make it up. And football's about habits. And if you get in the habit of losing games, yeah. it is so hard and confidence goes. And you go out to the field of play and you think, when am I when am I ever going to score a goal again as, a, as an individual? When's my team going to win again? And it's it's the most horrible feeling, but it works the other way because if you if you yeah. say the Tottenham team, you won the first three games, you're full of confidence, Positiveness. you've got your top goal scorer back in the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Do you think it was good? I know how much you love Spurs being a West Ham player. <laughs> Tongue in cheek, yes. Yeah, and, yeah. And you it's look, a great football class. And, 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 and you look for their results first, of course, about West Ham. But their management obviously changed quite a bit over the last three or four years. Was it good to see someone like Nuno come in from Wolves rather than a different name? There was, I think it was four names mentioned beforehand, weren't there? But yeah. he kind of came in. He's been quite quiet about it, but he's come in and he's done a fantastic job already. Well, he's a good manager. I mean, you've only got to look at what he's done at Wolves mm. over the course of the, the you know, three, four years he was at the football club. You know, I remember going and watched him in the championship and he was playing around the football in the championship. Mm. You know, he was playing three centre-halves, five in midfield, two up front. 
<coughs> excuse me, and they was playing some wonderful football. Yeah. And, and you think, wow, this team's going to go up. And not only did they go up, they also finished, I think it was about seventh or eighth in the Premier League yeah. in their first yeah. season yeah. back. So he, he's obviously a good manager. He's had issues with Harry Kane, we all know that, but that was there before he arrived. But he, he must be doing something right, you know. And it's a long way to go. You know, just as you can't say that you've got to sack Arteta because he's lost the three games, you also can't say that Nuno's going to be manager of the year and Spurs are going to win something because they won three games. Yeah. Football doesn't work that way, you know. It's, it's about it's why the Premier League, it's why we love the Premier League. It's why it's the most competitive and hardest league in the world to win. You know, is it technically the best league? I would say probably not. You know, because you've got Spain and you've got Italy, you've got France. Is it is it technically the best league? No, but in terms of all what it brings, and you know, it's, I think the biggest positive at the moment is the fans are back, Steve. I think yeah. it makes such a difference. And you know, we've all obviously suffered in the last couple of years with what's gone on, but I think to have fans back at the football, it makes a massive, massive difference. Do you think that's added to the excitement of the game? Do you think the players are responding to that? Is, are the games and what you've seen so far, are they, are they better? Is there more commitment? Is, there, is it more entertainment because the fans are back and they rise to the occasion? I think there's two vital ingredients that have made it a really, really good start to the season. And we're, we're, we're literally talking after yeah. three games. Mm. But the fans, I mean, that's the first thing. The fans have made a massive difference. And it makes it harder as well. A lot of clubs had a really good away record last year. A lot of teams in the Premier League. And a lot of that was because you haven't got the hostility. You're not playing in front of 50,000 or 70,000 fans at Old Trafford that are screaming at you. So it's easier to go to Old Trafford to win yeah. than what it is if you're playing in front right. of 70,000 yeah. fans. We all know that. So that the fans have made a massive difference. And the second thing is, and this is following on from the Euros, the standard of the refereeing has been so much better. It has been. Yeah, it I've really seen that. Has. And, and then the, the game's flowing now more than it was yeah. you know, pre kind of pandemic, and that's actually better for the game. Yeah, I mean, listen, and the fans, of course. I mean, as you well know, and uh, I played in an era, I played in the 80s and the 90s, and it, it wasn't the kick em at all costs of the yeah. 60s. The 60s and the 70s was absolutely brutal. The 80s and 90s was very, very physical. Yeah. But then we went into the 21st century, and over the course of the last 20 years, We've developed a game of football where it's almost like a non-contact, yeah. almost like a game of basketball. Yeah, yeah. And I touch you like that and you fall over yeah. and get a free kick. And that's how extreme it was yeah, getting. Yeah. And I think for whatever reason, and it's definitely for the right reasons and for the benefit of the game, someone somewhere has had the, I won't say the word, but they stood up to it and said, you know, we need some more physicality in the, into the game. Because football is a contact, it's a contact sport. Yeah. And you've got to be strong. And you want to see the likes of Lukaku strong yeah, you've sure. got Triori yeah, Walls yeah, another player yeah, I love yeah, watching he's yeah, so yeah, strong yeah. Antonio West Ham yeah. and they use their strength and, and, and if a defender sort of gets sort of pushed by them and, and goes over the advantage is going to yeah. the forward rather than yeah. the defender so it's made a massive difference and, and I've always said this Steve and, I, and, and you know we all love seeing goals in football but sometimes if there's a tackle a 50-50 full blooded tackle in the centre of the park and everyone goes like that, all the fans, but you then get a roar yeah, that's yeah. almost as good as a goal. So the point I'm making is the fans want to see it. You know, that old saying, I was probably not politically correct, but that old saying, it's a man's game, and all get up, yeah, yell with yeah, it, and all yeah, that. Yeah. But you know, that's not the saying anymore, we all know that, but it's a physical game. And you, you, know, you need the physical aspects of football. And I think, as I say, the fans, and the physicality, the mm. refereeing has made it a real spectacle. Let's hope it continues. Yeah, yeah. We don't want it going back the other way. We've set the standards yeah. now, let it continue. Well, there were complaints. Uh, I know the clock complained after a little Burnley game. And that you playing Burnley, <laughs> which means <we expect. laughs> the physicality of the Burnley forwards. I mean, was that just like him uh, crying over the spilt milk? But I mean, that's the way the game's been. But he was happy last weekend when they were like winning kind of battles against Lukaku and Liverpool playing Chelsea. Do you think, and I think it's also Solskjaer came out recently and said the same sort of thing, but that's, again, that is good for the game. It's good, it is. we want to see that. I mean, let's clarify, we're not talking about players recklessly tackling or going into deliberately injured players. Yeah. Which, as I said, in the previous century, that there, there was a lot of that going on. There was a lot of intimidation, the old crazy gang, Wimbledon, yeah. all that, you know, trying to put people yeah, off. Yeah, that. And yeah. I'm not advocating I want that back in the game. What I'm saying is, it, it's got to be a, an even playing field, isn't it? If you're strength, so you look at Burnley, Sean Dyche was a very physical, tough centre half mm. who I played against and played with. You know, he wants his teams to compete. Mm. And um, Burnley don't spend 
two, no. three, four, five, six, seven hundred no, million no, in the transfer no, no. market. Burnley spend fifty million or hundred million in the transfer market. So by definition, Liverpool have got better players than Burnley anyway. We all know that. So you've got to compete in other yeah, ways. Yeah. And play to your strengths. Play to your strengths, correct. Cool. And, and the great thing about football, and that's what teams do, you get the variation. Yeah. And that is why the league is so difficult. Because, listen, Jürgen can moan as much as he wants, but Burnley will always play to their strengths. They play a 4-4-2, they're tough, they're physical, and you've got to work hard to... If you want to beat Burnley, you've got yeah. to work just as hard, if not harder, yeah. than Burnley. And that, that's what it's all about. And also, it's a different challenge. That. He knows that as well. Yeah, and he there's all the mind that. games. Yeah, you know, you know, there's a lot that. going on, Steve. Yes, just, just about management. Pochettino, PSG, Solskjaer, United, spent the great names, big players. How much pressure are those two guys under? Imagine Pochettino, <coughs> PSG, huge pressure. He's got to deliver this year a Champions League. Well, I think... The, you're right, the Champions League's the holy grail. I mean, yeah. they've been close, haven't they? They're getting yeah. closer. Yeah. Same with yeah. Man City as well. You know, that's the holy grail for them. Now, you know, they need to deliver. Um, Oli, you mentioned that Manchester United spending big money. Whenever you spend big money as mm. a manager, mm. the pressure's on. You know, the pressure is on the players because the players have got to perform and they've you know, got to go onto the pitch and score your goals, win your games, etc. But it's the managers that are really, really get the pressure. Um, I think um, Poch. <clears throat> particularly with Simon Messi, they'll, they'll fancy their chances. Yeah. And I think, I think if you if you beat PSG at any stage in the competition, you've got to think, and they might be on the cut because they're, they're going to be tough to beat. Well, they've they're got tough group, they? as well. They've got City, haven't they, in, in, the, uh, yeah. in their group? Yeah, of course they have, and that's going to be fantastic to watch. But the group, for me, the group games, are, yeah. I, you know, I, I wasn't a, a fan of the so-called Super League, but I understand where that was coming from, Steve. Mm-hmm. I think it needs sprucing up a yeah. little bit. The, the group stages are a little bit Some of the games aren't as interesting, are they? <clears throat> They're not, and, yeah, and also yeah. you look at it and you're thinking, well, um, <laughs> you know the results. Mm-hmm. Almost before, you know that Man City and PSG are going yeah. to go through. Yeah. If you look at all those eight, there's eight groups, if you look at the eight groups, <coughs> and you can see really nominate the <coughs> oh dear, <coughs> I think it's called a frog in front. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can nominate the two teams yeah. that are going to really finish. Know, you you pretty much yeah, know. I would say fourteen of the sixteen that are going to be in the next phase, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. that's something they've got to look at because we don't want football to become predictable. No, we don't no. want it to become boring. That's where the Super League was coming from. It was done in an ill-conceived way. We know that it was never going to happen. But I think football is constantly evolving, and I think all competitions, the FA Cup being a great example, you've got the League Cup as well, you need to look at you know ways of developing the competition yeah, yeah. and uh, making it more exciting and, and more beneficial for the fans. And it's not, that's not just football. I mean, I've just enjoyed watching the Cricket 100, which I thought fantastic. was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I still want to watch the Lord's Test yeah, match yeah, as well. So yeah, yeah. it's about getting you, you, you've got to keep your core that makes the football the great game it is. But you've got to keep improving. I think that thing, what we just spoke about the Champions League, doesn't need looking at. And being deadline day, I've been some big transfers. I mean, do you see anything happening today which we, you know, the huge transfers still? Do you see like little bits here and there, teams kind of add in? Do you, any major happening in the big clubs? Even the kind of teams in the bottom half, do you see anything major happening today? It's, it's, it's always difficult because I think the last. Maybe it's Harry, of course. I mean, yeah, you know, of course. I mean, if Harry was involved, yeah, there'd yeah. be a lot happening yeah, today. Yeah, exactly. But he's not around. He's today. not around. No. So, um, I mean, I think the last, fair to say, the last probably five or six windows have been really, really quiet. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, obviously, we've had COVID, yeah, which yeah. has made a difference with finances. Although you look at the amount of money that's been washing around, there still is a lot of money in <laughs> football. Not you, bad, you know is that. It? So, um, do I see anything major? Um, no, I don't. I mean, the only sort of major surprise would be something like Harry Kane all of a sudden got Man City. Yeah. You know, we're all like, wow, we thought that was over. And it's, you know, that would be <clears throat> something major. But the, I think in terms of the, not less of transfers, but you, you, you'll probably see quite a few, maybe a 15 yeah. or 20 mil yeah. or 25. Correct, sure. I think there'll be a few going around. You know, it, it, it's, it's so hard to assess it, Steve, because mm-hmm. you, you know, clubs always want new players. You're always looking, you're looking, not just to improve the team now, but you're looking to improve the squad. And you, you know, there's always so many moving parts. And, and one of the things I think that fans don't always understand is is the chain. A bit like moving house. And yeah, you, know, yeah, you, yeah. you see your house down the road. You want to, there's a house in front of that where yeah, they got no, to buy their house, yeah. and then the one moving out. And, 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 so with football, it's exactly the same principle. You know, you, you might get a key movement, say midday, lunchtime ish. Mm. Someone moves, and by them moving it. Sets off the chain reaction because a lot of the clubs they've got 
uh, plans in place, but unless that first one happens, we've seen it so many times that you know that there's a key transfer, and you could possibly have argued that Harry Kane going to Man City would have been would the have catalyst, that, yeah, that because that would have then brought players. 150 mil into Spurs. Spurs, okay. Spurs then got to go and sign a yeah. centre forward. Yeah. They signed a centre forward. All of a sudden, they need a replacement. There's a gap there. So, but I, I don't see anything overly exciting. I'd, I'd like to think otherwise, but I don't see anything uh, so, too see, exciting. Anyone going to come in for you today? Anyone coming in to buy you today? To buy me or yeah. you're coming to my club West Ham? I'm not sure what you meant. Is no, there. coming to buy you no, today? No, sadly I've retired. Oh, okay. I, I'd love so, to. Not it, happen, it, it, that's an if only. If okay. I was moving to a club and getting 100 grand a week wages, I'd be loving it. Right. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll be seeing you right now. We'll take you out Okay, we'll look forward to that. Well, there you have it. Transfer deadline day. Have a great day. Thank you very much, TC. Thank Cheers, you. Steve.